Section 4, Using APIs for an Object Identifier. So in Section 4, we're going to be creating a pretty unique application here using Unity, as well as some online web development skills as well. In order to do this, we're going to be utilizing the assistance of several APIs. So in the first video, we're going to be going over a web setup and also how to upload some files to a server. Following that, we will be registering for a Cloudinary API, scripting our identifier controller, getting the Yandex API key, scripting to translate, and then creating our drop-down menu script, and then finally testing by taking some pictures. So here we go with video one, web setup and the file upload. In this video, we will cover what an API is, my Unity project structure, using a PHP file hosted onto a server, and deploying files to a Node.js server using Heroku. So I am going to be going through what an API is and pretty much the whole setup that I currently have for my application. The reason why I'm doing this is so we can actually get into the whole AR aspects of our application. So you hopefully have a little bit of web development experience. If you don't, it's perfectly okay. I have actually linked some sources in my slideshow right here that you can look at and find out any additional information that you might not know. So we're going to be working with two APIs here. But what exactly is an API? Well, an API is basically what stands for an application programming interface. An API is a set of subroutines, definitions, protocols, and tools used for creating web applications. Companies commonly put out APIs for some of their website's features, such as Google Custom Search, Facebook Graphs, and various other features on their websites. The first one that we're going to be interacting with is the Cloudinary API which will be used for uploading and storing images. In order to retrieve a word from an image, we would need to send the image URL from Cloudinary to this PHP script I found link provided. This script I have found, I actually did not write it all just a, just to cover that. I actually found this, but it is very useful for um, the application that we're gonna be creating. What this PHP file is gonna do is it's going to parse the line from the image search URL that we have gotten from Google. And this Google image search is pretty much going to pick a best guess word that's associated with the picture that we have uploaded to Cloudinary. So right here is pretty much a couple of resources to get started with Node.js. We're gonna be needing Node.js for this website. A lot of other sorts of frameworks that are normally used for developing websites would actually not work. It's a lot better to have the Node.js framework here because if you're using Rails, if you're using um, other frameworks, uh, it doesn't really work so well with this project right here. So make sure that you have a Node.js site running live on the web. If you don't, and I imagine that some of you probably don't, uh, here's a couple of quick references that you can use to get Node.js site up and running rather quickly. First reference right over here is about installing Node.js and NPM, which you are gonna be needing in order to install a couple of different components to Node.js that you're going to be needing in order to push up the uh, code files and everything to get deployed onto your server. And plus, NPM just makes everything easier. There is another section right over here on just the general Node.js download and installation. And right over here is a reference to the Node NPM scaffold. So as I said before, you're going to need to actually install NPM, get that running through either your your command line tools or some other way of just installing it rather quickly. Make sure that you have NPM along with Node because you're going to be needing it for scaffolding. And what basically scaffolding does is you're able to just type in a couple of commands into the command line and then, or the command prompt if you're using Windows, and then it should actually generate a website extremely quickly and you can just go ahead and get that pushed up. However, if you really don't want to go through all this here and learn how to make a Node website really quickly, you can alternatively always look up on GitHub and find open source Node.js websites that you can just borrow and use for this project and nothing else more. So you can get the PHP file that you're gonna be needing for this project. In this following link right here, I'm actually hosting it through one of my Google Drives and you can access it through this link right over here and just download it right away. The PHP file that I'm talking about looks like this. So if you follow the link and if you see this, then just be sure to download this right away and then you should be good to go with that. So after you download this file, then 
and also after you have your Node.js site built and ready to go, then what you have to do next is just drag and drop the getData.php file into your file skeleton. And then you're going to get ready to deploy to Heroku. So in order to get my Node.js website that I picked out, I actually deployed it with Heroku, which is a free hosting service. In case of, for those of you that may not know about Heroku, it's a free hosting service. So you don't have to pay anything for this. You can find out more about how to install Heroku through this link right over here. You can also see I actually have the site open as well over here. You can actually go through the setup on how to set up through your command line. You also may have to download a package in order to install Heroku as well. But yeah, you can even install through NPM and then, you know, just log in once you create your account. And then after you logged in, after you have your account credentials, I would just learn about the Heroku command line commands or command prompt commands that you will actually be needing in order to deploy to Heroku. So once you get that all down, just follow these directions here and then you can go ahead and start deploying. So just a quick look at my file setup. So over here, I have my test site. I'm going to open that up. So your file skeleton should look something similar to this when you have your node website ready. So right over here is where you should put your getData.php. It has to be right in the directory as soon as you open up your folder, which is housing your node.js site, and then just take the PHP file and then just make sure that you drag and drop it in here. Another thing that you should also be aware of when using Heroku is that Heroku may actually use different build packs to accomplish different sorts of deployment. So it's important to make sure that you have the corresponding build pack for whichever application you're trying to deploy. So if we just go back to the Heroku web page and just look at build packs, you're going to have to type in a command into your command line. And it's basically just this right here. It's Heroku build packs, semicolon set, and then Heroku, and then the name of whichever build pack you want to set it to. So in this case here, you would want to be setting it to Heroku slash node.js. And then after that is set, your application should be ready to be deployed. 